Every October 1st, Catholics around the world honor the life of St. Therese of the Child Jesus and the Holy Face. Marie Francoise Therese Martin was born January 2, 1873, in Alencon, France, to pious parents Marie Azelie Guerin and Louis Martin, the first and currently the only married couple canonized by the Roman Catholic Church by Pope Francis in 2015. Because of her frail condition, Marie was entrusted to a nurse, Rose Taille, in the Bocage forests of Somale. She was educated in a very Catholic environment, including mass attendance at 5.30 a.m., the strict observance of fasts, and prayer to the rhythm of the liturgical year. On August 28, 1877, her mother died, Therese was four years old. She remembered the bedroom scene where her dying mother received the last sacraments while Therese knelt and her father cried. Three months later, their family moved to Lysia in the Calvados department of Normandy, close to where her mother's brother lived. Therese was taught at home until she was eight and a half and then entered the school kept by the Benedictine nuns of the Abbey of Notre Dame du Prix in Lysia. In October 1882, her sister Pauline, who had acted who was very close to her, entered the Carmelite convent at Lysia. She also wanted to join the Carmelites but was told she was too young. At this time, Therese was often sick. She was diagnosed with an emotional frustration connected with a neurotic attack. Eventually, Therese recovered after she had turned to gaze at the statue of the Virgin Mary. She reported that on May 13, 1883, she had seen the Virgin smile at her. She wrote, Our Blessed Lady has come to me, she has smiled upon me. How happy I am! It was on Christmas Eve of 1886 when Therese had a profound experience of intimate union with God, which she described as a complete conversion. A year later, in a papal audience during a pilgrimage to Rome, in 1887, she asked for and obtained permission from Pope Leo XIII to enter the Carmelite monastery at the young age of 15. The Bishop Hugonin of Bayou authorized the prioress of the Carmelite monastery to receive Therese. On April 9, 1888, Therese was officially accepted and became a Carmelite postulant. On entering, Therese devoted herself to living a life of holiness, doing all things with love and childlike trust in God. Though she struggled with life inside the convent, she decided to make an effort to be charitable to all, performing acts of charity and sacrifices which later helped her come to a deeper understanding of her vocation. She wrote, Charity gave me the key to my vocation. I understood that the church had a heart and that this heart was burning with love. I knew that one love drove the members of the church to action, that if this love were extinguished, the apostles would have proclaimed the gospel no longer, and the martyrs would have shed their blood no more. I understood that love comprised all vocations, that love was everything, that it embraced all times and places, in a word, that it was eternal. Then in the excess of my delirious joy, I cried out, O oh Jesus, my love, my vocation, at last, I have found it. My vocation is love. The end of Teresa's time as a postulant arrived on January 10, 1889, with her taking of the habit. She absorbed the work of John of the Cross, a spiritual reading uncommon at the time, especially for such a young nun. She received a new name Carmelite when she entered the order that was promised to her by Mother Marie de Gonzague, of the Child Jesus. When she received the veil, Therese asked Mother Marie de Gonzague to confer upon her the second name, of the Holy Face, which is the image representing the disfigured face of Jesus during the Passion. Usually, the novitiate preceding profession lasted a year. Sister Therese hoped to make her final commitment on or after January 11, 1890, but, considered still too young for a final commitment, her profession was postponed. It was not until the 8th of September 1890 that she made her religious profession. Against her heart, she wore her letter of profession written during her retreat, May creatures be nothing for me, and may I be nothing for them, but may you, Jesus, be everything. Let nobody be occupied with me, let me be looked upon as one to be trampled underfoot, may your will be done in me perfectly. Jesus, allow me to save very many souls, let no soul be lost today, let all the souls in purgatory be saved. 
On September 24, the public ceremony followed filled with sadness and bitterness over the absence of Bishop Hugonen, her spiritual director Jesuit Father Pitchin, and her own father, who was at that time confined in the asylum due to declining health. But Mother Marie de Gonzague wrote to the prioress of Tours, the angelic child is 17 and a half, and she has the judgment of one of 30, the religious perfection of an old perfected novice, and possession of herself, she is a perfect religious. In September 1893, Therese, having been temporarily professed for the standard three years, asked not to be promoted but to continue as a novice indefinitely. As a novice, she would always have to ask permission from the other full sisters. She would never be elected to any position of importance. However, by the end of 1894, six years as a Carmelite nun made her realize how small and insignificant she felt, the limitations of all her efforts. She is said to have understood then that it was from insignificance that she had to learn to ask God's help. The smallness of Therese, her limits, became in this way grounds for joy, rather than discouragement. Not until manuscript C of her autobiography did she give this discovery the name of Little Way, Petite Voy. I will seek out a means of getting to heaven by a little way, a very short and very straight little way that is wholly new. We live in an age of inventions, nowadays the rich need not trouble to climb the stairs, they have lifts instead. Well, I mean to try and find a lift by which I may be raised unto God, for I am too tiny to climb the steep stairway of perfection. Thine arms, then, O Jesus, are the lift which must raise me up even unto heaven. To get there I need not grow. On the contrary, I must remain little, I must become still less. Therese offered herself as a sacrificial victim to the merciful love of God on June 9, 1895, the Feast of the Most Holy Trinity, and the following year, on the night between Holy Thursday and Good Friday, she noticed the first symptoms of tuberculosis, the illness which would lead to her death. Therese recognized in her illness the mysterious visitation of the Divine Spouse and welcomed the suffering as an answer to her offering the previous year. She also began to undergo a terrible trial of faith which lasted until her death a year and a half later. On August 19, 1897, she received her last communion. She died on September 30, 1897, at age 24. On her deathbed, she is reported to have said, I have reached the point of not being able to suffer anymore because all suffering is sweet to me. Her last words were, My God, I love you. Since her death, millions have been inspired by her, little way, of loving God and neighbor. Saint Therese was proclaimed a doctor of the church by Pope John Paul II in 1997 to 100 years after her death. She is only the third woman to be so proclaimed, after Saint Catherine of Siena and Saint Teresa of Avila. For more information about every saints and their feast day, please like and subscribe to our channel, House of Prayers for Everyone.